Now the next thing that we need to do in order to make this customer rich, okay, um, we need to, for example, now create here a constructor which will allow us to create the customer. Yeah, let's create our constructor here. Let me just use the IntelliJ one to generate for me a constructor. Let's just select the fields that we want. Okay, okay, we are going to create the customer using the the public constructor. It's not a problem. Okay, to instantiate it like this. And yes, yeah, we can see. Okay. So the, the problem here is that I want to give always a meaningful name. So the constructor is good to create objects, but it doesn't specify the intention okay, of this operation. So that's why I'm going to create here a method, okay, which will expose this behavior, the creation of a customer. So it's going to be private, this one. So it will return, it's a method, okay? So it will return a customer. So let's just give here a name, create. And yes, I think um, we don't want to validate it, okay? We just going to receive, the, uh, receive it. And yeah, we are going to delegate it to the constructor. For now, let's just add one more method here, which will allow us to change the customer email address, okay? So in that order, let's just go. Change email, okay? Um, let's just receive already here, okay? A, uh, the value object, okay? The email address. So, oops, here a typo. So let's just correct it, change email. Okay, so now let's just do it like this. Um, email address will be, uh, okay, like this. So uh, instead of, for example, having here a setter, okay, for example, this one, oops, this one here, Okay, we are removing it. And instead of having here setter, for example, set email, set a first name. No, we are having here a real method which express the intention. Okay, we are changing the email address. Okay, and we are receiving for, for, for this tutorial, of course, we are receiving already a valid email address, okay, which contain its own validation. So this is uh, good because uh, our domain model is expressing, okay, the real intention has behaviors. So guys, actually, when you apply, when you uh, apply the domain model, okay, the rich domain model with uh, domain-driven design, if you create your methods like this with real intentions, okay, in the name, you will probably follow the principle of tell don't ask so the tell don't ask is very nice principle okay in object oriented programming that will uh, actually uh, make your domain model more fancy okay and more how can i say like you will follow the best practices so i hope that you read a little bit more about this principle but actually the, the thing that will happen here for example when a component want to change the customer email address okay it will it will just for example tell okay change email address okay apply customer um, I don't know insurance do something okay instead of first getting the object and asking if it can uh, uh, um, uh, asking if you can change okay the email address or, or something like that so if you read the blog post that I'm leaving here for you guys you will understand a little bit more about uh, tell don't ask principle. So having it like this will allow us to follow this principle, which is very nice to learn. And yeah, let's go. So in that order, let's just go, for example, here into our service. 
and let's add a new method okay let's call it by change let's call it by change email it will receive a long okay which will represent the customer id okay and also the email address okay of course we could receive a string or something like that and then create here inside but it's not a big problem okay so now here let's just implement the method in our service let's implement the method okay the create one okay the create one for example we could uh, use it here that create and it will receive the first name last name and something like that but uh, i don't want this tutorial to be so long okay so we are receiving it here of course because once in order to get here this customer somewhere in our uh, application we will need to use the create method okay uh, so in that order so this method we leave we are going to leave just like this and this one the thing that we need to do is we need to use the repository in order to find uh, the customer, okay, uh, by ID and then um, change the email address. So let's do that. Uh, the first thing that we need is to use the repository, okay. So let's use the customer repository that we are injecting here. So customer repository that find by ID. So we are going to use the customer uh, ID. If you remember, guys, uh, this is um, the crude repository. Okay. And it, actually, we are using here JPA repository. Okay. So we find by ID. So if the customer does not exist, okay, we are returning here we are going to throw an ex an exception here okay so let's just use the supplier we are going to use illegal argument except exception and we are going to use for example here the string format and we are just say like okay coolant so we are just telling here that couldn't find a customer by given id okay so if we remember now we have the customer, okay, the existing customer in our database. So now we can just, for example, here call customer that change email address, okay? And then we are going to use the email address, the new email address. And yeah, that's good. If we if we can see now, the only responsibility that our service have here is to connect our domain object with some other part of our system for example the repository it's not the responsibility of our service to change the email address but instead we are using the customer itself to change the email address okay so now i think uh, for now let's just use here the the repository okay and let's just say save Okay, the customer that we just change email address. Okay, so you could just use like this, for example. Okay, yeah. So uh, this is what we have here in our service. And now let's go to the controller. Okay, and I like also to put here, for example, a final. So, um, and yes, so now let's move to our controller. And later we are going to move to our Kafka implementation in order to understand the publish subscribe okay so every time when we create a new customer or when we change an email address we are going to publish an event okay so but first we need to create a mean to receive the customer from our controller so let's do that so guys remember doing so we have just applied the principle of tell don't ask so just to make it clear, tell don't ask, okay, reading it from the Martin Fowler blog post. The tell don't ask principle is a principle that helps developers or people to remember that object orientation is about building data with the functions, okay? 
these functions, they operate on the data. As we can see here in our example, we are operating on data. Which data? Customer. So it reminds us that rather than asking an object for data and acting on that data, we should instead tell an object what to do. So it is what we have done here, okay? Hope you read a little bit more about this topic. You can find a lot of blog posts in the internet, okay? But yeah, tell, don't ask is something that you should keep in your mind when you are building um, uh, microservices, not only microservices, but when you are building your application. Even if you don't apply uh, domain-driven design or something like that, this is the principle of object-oriented programming, okay? And we should follow, we should focus on our domain model.